Hi everyone, my name is Jocelyn Kaza with Everbridge, and I'm excited to introduce you to my colleague, Eric Chetwin, Senior Product Marketing Director at Everbridge. Today's agenda focuses on how to build enterprise resiliency, plan for severe weather events, and use technology to your advantage. I have a little housekeeping before we begin. We'll be recording the session and making it available on demand after today. Also, we'll be accepting audience questions and we'll try to answer a few of them at the end of the session. So please feel free to submit the questions as you think of them. If we're unable to answer your question, we'll be sure to have someone to follow up with you directly. Okay, let's jump into the presentation. Eric, take it away. Great, thanks Jocelyn. And thank you everybody for joining us today. Um, as Jocelyn said, we're gonna talk about enterprise resiliency and really, and then move very quickly into severe weather and, and the impact it can have and some of the steps that you can take to prepare um, for severe weather events. Um, and then towards the end today, we'll go through a little bit about some of the changes in technology um, and some of the technologies that you can use to help both prepare and mitigate those weather events on your businesses. So first, you know, I, I wanna take a moment, we all just came out of 2020 and I think um, one of the things that many um, organizations are realizing is that business resilience, enterprise resilience, operational organizational resilience is really a critical factor of moving forward. And so what we're hearing a lot when we talk to um, customers across the country is that um, it's no longer just preparing for the one big sentinel event, although we will talk about some of that today, um, but it's really about how do you prepare for flexing your organization and adapting your organization um, in general to the, <clears throat> not only to the weather events, for example, which we'll go through, but to the many events that are impacting us at, at a time. Because I think that's the other big lesson learned out of last year that many companies are coming back and saying, you know, it's not just a one time, one event. I have multiple events that are happening concurrently. Some are big, some are small. How do I flex my organization? So as we've worked with customers across the country on this, one of the big messages we've really heard is, you know, it's, it's a journey, but it's a journey moving from a reactive position to a more proactive position. And that really essentially means, you know, being proactive is the more time and insight that you have, the more options obviously you're gonna have and the less expensive those options are, right? So as we think about the impact of any event, right? Business interruptions, avoiding those, right? Um, Potential loss of life and safety is obviously a key one for many organizations. Um, negative PR, bad response, right? Crisis communications coming out of the executive team. Um, supply chain disruption and how that might impact your ability to deliver on your uh, deliver to your customers. Um, in some cases, it may impact your market opportunities depending on a region that you may uh, be working with. And of course, you know, just faster recovery in general. How quickly can you get all that? Are resolved. So as we think about moving to that proactive posture, um, you know, we at Everbridge really think of it as kind of in this sort of circle, and I'm sure many of you think of it in sort of this ongoing process of being able to assess the issues that, uh, and events that may impact you um, and impact your business, particularly um, identifying where those impacts are going to happen, correlating that all together. We'll walk through a little bit of that today obviously managing your, your response and then analyzing that and optimizing your entire response so that your organization becomes stronger coming out of um, each of these events. And obviously we want that time to be as quick as possible as we move through that circle and as robust as possible. You know, one of the things I just, uh, I think we've also heard a lot about is uh, moving beyond, looking beyond your four walls at the events, the types of events can impact your business, right? So many times businesses are building plans that are thinking about, you know, what happens if I have an active assailant, for example, come into the building or a utility disruption or a fire, right? Things that happen within my campus infrastructure or within my physical locations. But really, I think coming out of last year, one of the big themes we've heard is you really need to start looking beyond that, right? So today we're gonna to talk about weather. That's obviously one that impacts beyond your, maybe just your campus location, but things like civil unrest that came out of last year, transportation disruptions, thinking beyond to what the other impacts outside your building um, and, and campus location might be, how that impacts you and your people. Um, and that's again, even more heightened now that we have 
many organizations moving to a hybrid workforce, right? Where we have a lot of us working remotely, some combination of remote and in-person. Um, so those are a couple of themes we'll talk about as we go through today, but I just want to kind of paint the picture of some of the things we're hearing about what does it mean to be resilient and what do you really need to consider as you go through this process. So the last element I'll just talk about here is just the traditional barriers that we that we see as we think about, and again, we're gonna talk about weather, but again, think broader about any event that might impact your business. And the challenges are, as you think about essentially your people, your, your staff, your employees, the people you work with, the physical locations that you work with, whether you have corporate campuses, manufacturing sites, uh, fleets of, of vehicles, et cetera. Obviously your IT infrastructure, right? So, um, you know, the backbone of your organization, most organizations is certainly that IT infrastructure. And then what are your operational concerns? It may be that if you're a manufacturing organization, that's your supply chain, your vendors, um, your ability to deliver to customers, your online presence, all those elements may uh, may play a role. So the road, the barriers here are, those are often different teams within your organization, right? And so as we think about the challenges we commonly hear, one is siloed teams, right? And so you need a way, as you think about these events that particularly span multiple parts of your organization, how can you get the whole organization collaborating together to respond to them? Um, Related to that is complex processes, right? So as you think about those responses, you quite often, we quite often find um, many processes in place almost by department or team uh, location. They may be dupli duplicative in some areas. Um, some teams may cover some things and not others. They may be complex. So how do you, how do you bring some harmony to that? And then also um, what are opportunities to even extend those processes and extend the reach? Of your processes and then lastly disparate systems so what we're going to talk a little bit about is as you go through as we go through today's presentation we'll talk about how you can create a common all hazards risk picture for all your teams at once so certainly with a weather related event that would be one that spans your whole organization but again this can apply to any events that may impact your business operations um, automation so not only getting your teams working better together the people on your teams but we'll talk a little bit about technology and how can you really automate the technologies around you, your physical systems, your digital systems, to help you respond better and co uh, co coordinate, excuse me, that response better in response to these types of events. And then, of course, lastly, you know, we often find many different uh, technology systems in place. Uh, how do you integrate those? How do you unify those across your organization? Um, to, to really provide one common platform, so to speak, for everybody to work from. So with that said, let's move on to weather. Weather is, you know, and um, I'm sure as many of you know, is one of the bigger events that it can impact an organization <clears throat> because they tend to be broad spectrum type events. Um, and in fact, I, you know, probably no surprise to many of you on the line, they have actually been increasing, right? So. Uh, there was an uh, insurance industry study that looked at this and said there's been 40% increase in weather-related events since 2019. And those, those particular events they were looking at caused about $80 billion in insured losses. So they are on the rise. Um, so it is clearly, if you don't have a plan today, and we'll talk a little bit about some of the things that probably you should think about in your plan, um, you should seriously consider a plan for your business around weather-related events. Um, and then we're going to go through a few specific weather related events. I've just listed um, some, some key ones out here as we look back on 2020 and what last year looked like. Um, some of these events were significantly higher last year. Some of them were on track with previous years. We'll go through that in, in um, some perspective uh, as we look at this. Um, and the ones we'll talk a lot about, you know, that we often hear is the big, uh, the higher impact ones, not to ignore any events. Tornadoes is certainly one. Um, if you're in that region of the country where, um, uh, where tornadoes can impact your organization, um, as we look back at, you know, just the first half of this year, there's been almost 700 tornadoes in the first half of this year, um, which is about on par with the 2020 tornado season. Um, losses are projected at over $10 billion this year, and there's already been 73 lives lost. So the life, the actual life safety challenge has actually been higher this year 
um, than last year. And certainly tornadoes will, as we go through, can have a significant impact on, on a business. And of course, they're quick happening events, right? So your plans there are, are key in uh, quick evacuations and those kinds of things. Uh, next on our list is uh, hurricanes. Many uh, parts of the country are impacted by hurricanes. Um, last year was actually a um, record-breaking year for the hurricanes. We had 30 named storms. We actually had uh, enough storms here in the United States that we ran out of uh, uh, standard names and had to move to the Greek alphabet. Um, and those those hurricanes again had broad-based uh, implications and. You know, I just listed here Hurricane Laura, which was estimated at eight to twelve billion dollars in damages due to lost operations for businesses impacted by that. Um, and I I highlighted here too just another thing, and we'll talk about this as we go through the planning. Um, one that jumped out with me is you know in 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 Hurricane Sally, <clears throat> um, you know there was a barge that was pushed into a bridge and and basically took the bridge out, right? Um, and so that closed operations for months. Um, around that bridge and impacted the businesses in those areas. So as you're thinking about your plannings and these weather impacts, it's not just do you receive flooding in your building, for example, or does it damage the roof of your building or your people? But you know, is it going to impact your operations post-event and the surrounding area? And are you going to be able to get back up to speed? As we jump on wildfires, I'm sure um, you know. Um, I'm located on the East Coast and uh, here here and uh, you know we've actually seen the smoke from the wildfires out, out west coming across country so that you know wildfire season has been huge this year um, in the 2020 season um, it was over 20 billion dollars in business impact um, and actually led to for those of you on the West Coast uh, PG&E is uh, the big uh, big power supply utility out there has actually had to run rolling blackouts. There's been legislation around this, which can also impact your business. So the impact of these events may not just be that the wildfire is happening, but it's actually changing how the uh, support infrastructure for your business may be operating, in this case with rolling blackouts. And so think about, and I'm sure many of you on the West Coast are now doing that, thinking about how those blackouts will impact the power supply and how you respond to those as well. As we look at this year, there's already been 86 incidents, so those are larger wildfires. There's actually been many more wildfires that have occurred in the United States, covering over 15, uh, excuse me, 1.5 million acres to date. Um, so severe impact there. Um, and then the last one is winter weather. Obviously, we're not into the winter season yet uh, for, for 2021. But as we look at back at last year, I'm sure nobody um, uh, we'll forget the, certainly the impact that her winter storm Yuri had on Texas and that region of the country, <clears throat> causing severe, um, you know, nine, between 195 billion and 295 billion dollars in uh, in losses, um, and really essentially took down the power grid um, for that part of the country for a significant period of time. So impacting employees at home, obviously, in the life safety, but obviously impacting the operations of businesses there. Um, and not just, again, if you're located in that area, but think about, um, I, I was working with a customer the other day who was describing to me they were in Nebraska and they were impacted by the fact that Texas had this storm and their vendors, their suppliers were in Texas. And so they couldn't get supplies from there anymore. And so what was the backup plan uh, for that operation? Um, so we'll go through in a little more detail here on those. Um, I just listed out here, and you'll have available to you post, post this uh, webinar, uh, this information, I'm sure many of you know it anyway, what the typical weather seasons are, um, you know, when we think about severe weather and how it impacts different parts of the country. Obviously, you know, the heaviest part uh, from a tornadoes is is spring and summer, um, and we're kind of exiting the heaviest part, although there can be tornadoes later in the year. Um, hurricanes, we're kind of right in, right in the prime season of that starting up. Um, and then wildfires, we know, uh, occur all year. And then of course, there's the winter season coming up uh, this year as well. So what are some things, you know, as we think about these events, what are some of the things you can do and you should think of, can, can consider um, to prepare? And I, I'll just share some of the ones that our customers have shared with us. Um, so first of all, you know, um, Review your business continuity plans, crisis management plans, emergency management plans. They, they I know they'll have different names depending on your organization. 
Um, but doing a quarterly review is, um, you know, we, a, a best practice that we've heard from many um, organizations to ensure that, you know, you are up to date, you are thinking about the latest uh, hazards that may impact your business. Um, and as you do that, you know, the things to consider is, you know, obviously ensure you have a plan for the weather, right? Um, so weather can have a big impact. Many of you have probably lived through that in your parts of the country. And obviously focus in on the ones that, that impact your, your business operations. Um, do consider though, um, you know, not only your business and of course your, your employees and particularly now um, as you think about your employees, many of them may be working remotely. So what, it, what, what does that uh, extended risk look like, uh, risk profile look like uh, from a continuity perspective? And what are you thinking about as you protect those employees at home as well? And then of course, your third party vendors, partners and suppliers, right? They may be um, you know, in different parts of the country, right? So as you think about you know, the example I just gave where you know, a company in Nebraska was working with a company in Texas and was, but was still impacted by the storm um, that, that hit their vendor, right? So uh, certainly consider that as you build your plans, who are those key vendors that you work with and partners uh, suppliers and uh, without whom, you know, your business would really come to a halt and where are they located? What are the threats and risks to them? Um, consider secondary impacts. We talked about the bridge going down in Pensacola. Uh, yeah, Pensacola. Uh, but, you know, think about uh, things that are not just your buildings, your, your direct campus and your people, but what might impact around your region um, and, uh, and, and what kind of plans might you have there so for example for the bridge um, and actually I've worked on similar plans with a number of customers you know what's your alternate way to get people in um, to your site should the bridge go down or get supplies to there or um, you might have people work at home more right so what what is your kind of your downtime plan for that um, ensure that with each of these events you know many of these events uh, tornadoes obviously are fairly quick um, but but with all of them the the remainder tend to be longer running events. Um, you know, ensure you have a, a plan that you know runs a long period of time, allows for turnover on your team as well, right? As you think about the longer events. So if you're in the wildfire uh, zone, you know how are you going to maintain staffing uh, for your response teams, for example, over time? Uh, but then also consider your post event plan, right? So you know what are you going to do? What kind of EAP employee assistant programs might you have available to you post an event? Claims filing, insurance, et cetera. What does your recovery look like? And make sure that is part of your plan. Um, one key one that I know many organizations struggle with is, you know, have a cross department governance structure, right? So um, a lot of organizations uh, that we work with may start off with just one or two people who are responsible for all the emergency kind of uh, preparedness or business continuity or crisis management, uh, but really you want your whole organization uh, flexing in response to these types of events, and that really ne means that you have to be working on a regular basis in a cross-department kind of governance structure, hopefully with executive sponsorship um, from your senior leadership team, because these types of events really can impact your business in pretty significant ways. Um, another thing as you think about your, your plans, um, Often we see a plan for the hurricane or the wildfire or whatever it might be. But think about how you might have overlapping plans and how, especially as we come out of 2020, right? There are many events that could happen concurrently. So, you know, a good example of that might be, you might have your hurricane plan, plan activated, but what happens if, if your organization also faces a cyber attack at the same time? Um, or, and or, obviously we just came out of, you know, we're just coming out of this sort of this COVID experience, you know, how does that alter all your plans, right? How does that alter your response and your checking on your employees um, and, and how you might mitigate these things? So consider that multiple kind of events, uh, business impacting events may happen at the same time. Um, and then I'll just, the last point here, and we'll go into a little more detail of this as we go forward, you know, how do you, how do you automate and enhance the response that you have, right? Um, so not just building a plan, but how can you extend your team? How can you extend their reach? How can you make it a faster response, cover more capabilities, et cetera? And we'll talk a little bit again, as I mentioned, about how technology can help with some of those elements. So 
um, you know, as you're thinking about your plans, you know, the other, the other core question that we often hear from folks is, you know, how do I monitor for events, right? Um, and so many organizations, you know, weather being one, right, many organizations will simply watch the weather for weather events and whether they're going to impact you. But again, I think as you think about, um, it's not just the hurricane and how it impacts your business, but understanding where are your vendors and partners? How are you monitoring the risks to their organizations? Um, and then how are you monitoring the overlay of a weather event with other events that may be happening at the same time uh, that could impact your business? So you know, trying to enhance that ability, sort of that um, risk intelligence, that signal intelligence upfront so that you're, you have the latest and greatest information available to you to be able to help you make better business decisions and respond better uh, to events. Um, and then lastly, communicate and practice. Um, so ensure you have you know, proactive, both communication plans during the crisis, a way to reach everybody, confirm that they have that information, um, a way to collaborate with your response team leads, um, but also proactive communication. How do you prepare employees particularly um, for these types of events ahead of time? So what are, what are things that you can communicate to them that will not only help them be prepared for the event, frankly, will lead to a better experience for them as an employee, keep them engaged, know that you're, you're really focused on your duty of care, um, but, but make them part of the process. Um, and then, uh, you know, lastly, test, 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 right? I think anybody, anybody on the line who's in business continuity, emergency management, disaster planning, you know, test your exercises as much as you can. For weather events, I know, um, you know, certainly as the season is coming up and we're in the middle of some of these seasons now, you know, running a test is certainly a, a great way to do this. As you think about those tests, you know, you might want to layer in, again, other events or other um, other impacts that you can into those tests to make them a little bit more robust as you advance forward. So let me talk a little bit about how technology can help. And I think the best way to do this is I'm just going to take you through an example of a weather event um, and show you how one organization kind of responds, leverages technologies to respond to that to that event. So the event we chose is a wildfire. Um, you know, as we talked about, wildfires have severely impacted the west, uh, western part of the country. Um, and in this scenario, in our example here, you know, we have a manufacturing organization, um, and they have a corporate campus in California. Uh, the, we have a wildfire that's spreading. You can see that represented here on the screen, um, and they're able to using technology monitor it in real time. Uh, quickly, you know, understand what locations and employees might be impacted by the fire and maybe even the expansion of the fire. Where is it likely to extend to? Um, they're able to get eyes on the situation. You can see here tapping into local cameras, traffic cameras, et cetera, to understand, again, how far has that spread? What are Not only what's the impact of the fire itself, but in the case of fire, quite often smoke is a huge impact. What does that impact look like? What are the latest updates? Um, in this scenario, they're quickly able to determine that we have just over 100 people um, who work for us or work with us in the impacted area. Um, and we have, we have our corporate campus and we have a couple of manufacturing sites. So, you know, in this case, we're, we're putting the security team at sort of the center of our story. They activate, you know, the, uh, the wildfire critical event plan, right? Um, and so really, Technology can help a bit uh, extensively here, right? Getting all the right people, um, all the right tasks in real time uh, across all the departments. Again, we talked about that cross-departmental governance structure. So working across all departments um, on the activation of their plans, giving them tasks and you could track that in real time, track those responses. Is everybody picking up their, their steps? Are they getting completed in time? All that can be done through technology. Now, based on this plan, um, they, the security team decides to evacuate the impacted facilities in the corporate campus. Um, you could, they start doing that. And again, we talked about, that seems like a logical response, obviously, but we talked about how do we flex the whole operation, right? So how does your business respond? In this example, operations 
has another manufacturing site that's not in the impacted area, and they decide to expand capacity at that non-impacted site. Um, they also look at things like the supply uh, supply chain. So supplies that are coming into the manufacturing facilities obviously won't be able to make it to those facilities, and we can potentially reroute them to the expanded capacity site. Um, HR in this case, who is also part of our cross-team communication, can reach out to those employees, providing them guidance for those who are at home um, about don't come to work today. Here are steps you can take to protect yourself and be prepared for a wild a wildfire. Um, can also reach out directly to obviously with different messaging to employees who are in the zone of the fire to give them different advice and offer assistance needs directly to them. So we've kind of a, we've used some technology. These teams we often find you know during a wildfire, right? Teams are quite often mobile. There may also be a you know centralized hub um, like a, a GSOC or an operations center. Um, but regardless, your technology should be able to cover all of those. Um, at the same time, obviously, you've got these multiple teams working. You need ways for the teams to collaborate, and you also need ways to provide critical information to your senior management team, right? In this case, a, a dashboard has been, uh, been pre-built so that as, as we um, share all the information, we update all the teams, we can directly provide this dashboard or situation reports up to senior management, empowering them to make better business decisions while the teams are doing their response and keep an eye on how the whole, on how the process is uh, proceeding. In our scenario here, uh, you know, security, as I mentioned, has um, evacuated those facilities. Um, after they evacuate the facilities, they decide to lock them down. Um, in this case, we're, we're highlighting how the systems, the physical systems and digital systems that you use can help you here. Um, so this is an automated lockdown where they're able to automatically lock all the doors, secure the site without anybody being necessarily on site to do that, um, reducing the risk to those employees. So that sort of hyper automation can help you respond faster and safer. Um, there's, in this scenario, they're staffing a conference bridge for the security team members. Um, so that's an open bridge. They, they set up a separate one for employees. Those could be other ways for employees to communicate, like audio bulletin boards, obviously ongoing communications as well. Now, as I mentioned earlier, it's really key to think about obviously what's, what's post event. So um, in this case, as, as, the fire, uh, as the fires are contained near the, your facilities, uh, in the case of this, this particular example, security teams allowed back in to assess the damage, um, record the damage directly through the platform here, um, photographing and documenting that to make decisions about which ones are gonna stay, which buildings we can open, which buildings we can't open. Um, they, they determine that there's a uh, parking structure on the main campus, which cannot be reopened at this time. And a manu one of the manufacturing sites cannot be reopened. Um, and again, all that information can be shared in real time as the updates are being provided up to our senior management team so they can make better business decisions about how they continue to flex the organization. Um, Again, directly through the platform, we can give the okay to reopen the uh, rest of the campus uh, directly to everybody so everybody knows, um, you know, return to the campus, um, or we can actually direct individuals to work at home who may be in the impacted um, site, or again, in the case of the manufacturing facility, we could actually offer them shifts at one of the other facilities while we're bringing back up that building, as well as, EA, you know, employee assistance programs. So we walked through a quick example, but I think it kind of brings together a number of elements. Um, and kind of the key things that we look at as we think about this, this idea of assessing and, and uh, acting on these events. In the assess phase, we you know, alerted in the wildfire, we were able to monitor that, on, that wildfire as it spread, the impact of it and the smoke, getting both visual and um, textual type of alerting and inf contextual information to be able to understand that. Obviously, post-event, going back in and assessing the damage. So that sort of circle of assess, locate, act, and analyze is obviously an ongoing process throughout the entire event. On the locate side, and this is really key, I think, for, particularly for, um, uh, as you think about the risk type of events that might impact your business, right? Being able to quickly understand who, 
who or what, if it's a vehicle or a building, are in the impacted potent or potentially impacted areas of these types of events, right? So who's within the fire perimeter? So you can tailor your outreach from your organization and flex your organization appropriately, right? So again, as we talked earlier, consider your work from home employees, consider travelers, right? You may have travelers who have come in um, who are planning to visit the corporate campus, right? Um, and they may also be staying near the impact area, um, uh, partners and other relevant assets in the area. Um, and then of course, responders as they evacuate, right? So, um, you know, we were able to keep our eyes on them, keep them collaborating as well. In the ACT phase, we communicate with all of our stakeholders. It's really important that obviously communication is one of the number one challenges um, as you think about um, an event like this and, and regular updates so people are aware of what's happening. We did an evacuation, um, kept, kept management informed, and then of course did our damage assessment. And then after the event is over, um, and with a wildfire, obviously that can, that can last quite a while, um, but all that information, because this is done on a technology platform, all that information is recorded in the platform. You can leverage all that, bring it back to your um, cross department governance committee, your risk management committee, um, have the conversation about here are areas we need to improve um, as we think about the next time that this type of event might happen um, and what are the lessons learned there and build those directly into your exercises, right? Build it into your tabletops or, or if you do a live type exercise, uh, integrate that directly. I thought I'd just list a couple of examples of customers that we work with um, who have uh, in some of the things that they've done um, in response to these kind of weather events. So Walgreens is a is long-term customer of Everbridges um, and they, through their, their SOC, their security operations center, which is where they kind of centrally controlled, you know, during the 2018 hurricane season and they continue to do this, you know, they would send it, they would not only um, do all the steps, many of the steps we're talking about, but they would do regular safety and well-being checks on impacted team members. Um, and who might be in, who might be at home, right? Um, not necessarily even working at the time, but at home to make sure that they're staying safe. Um, and I think that's true too. We've seen a lot of that with COVID. Um, you know, obviously for many organizations, that's almost become a regular uh, check-in process uh, during COVID. There was the outreach, how are you feeling sick? How are you feeling, et cetera. So these longer term events, really staying on top of that, can be very significant to not only productivity from an organization perspective, but also frankly to the experience that your employees and staff are having and, and keeping them safe. Um, we talked a little bit about supplies, right? So um, we work with a, you know, a pharmacy, uh, pharmaceutical change, large major one across the US. Um, they, they really spend a lot of time monitoring events across the country. In this case, they were looking at um, the impact of Hurricane Harvey. And as that hurricane emerged, they they were quickly able to assess that, okay, the impact is gonna be that our patients, our, our customers who we have to deliver medications to uh, in the impacted area will not, our regular supply chain won't work, right? So they coordinated an alternate supply chain to fly in those medications, which, which was obviously hugely impactful for their customers, for the patients that receive those medications um, but also for the business, right? Uh, both from a reputational perspective as well as a financial perspective. Um, and then I just listed one last one. This isn't really weather related, but again, as I mentioned earlier, you know, keeping, um, you know, the idea that these, some of these same processes can be used for multiple types of events during COVID. In this case, a major bank was, you know, sending pull notifications out to employees uh, about COVID symptoms, right? So. Again, keeping engaged with staff related to life safety um, is a key factor that we see many organizations doing. All right. So that's really the highlights of what um, we prepared for, for everybody today. Um, Jocelyn, I don't know if there are questions. We can certainly take some now that folks have. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So um, one of our attendees asked, um, at one point in your presentation, you mentioned setting up a bridge. Um, is that bridge a web page? Yeah, so a couple ways that could happen. Great question. 
Um, and certainly at Everbridge, we support multiple ways for that. So one is, I, I was speaking to a conference bridge, right? So an open conference bridge that could be done. It could be done. Uh, we have a couple of different ways that can work. Um, but it's usually the key there is it's it's one touch conferencing, right? So people in the field can quickly get connected into that conference call. Um, another way is, you know, chat windows, right? Another technology, chat ops is one that we support at Everbridge. Um, so you could you could set up a chat session as well um, for that kind of cross team coordination. I think the key is to really make sure that um, you have those available in ways that can reach people who again, especially during a weather event, right? Maybe out in the field, right? And you may even want to consider redundant ways of doing that. So the team can really coordinate and collaborate in case, uh, you know, the infrastructure also has challenges uh, in, in, in resulting from the weather event. Perfect, thanks, Eric. Um, sure. Another question we have is, what technology trends are you seeing around critical event management? Yeah, so there's a lot of technology that's coming available that can help, um, I think, with critical events. And so, you know, a couple of key things that we've heard from customers. Um, the first one is really just much better ways to monitor the events that could impact your business, right? So risk intelligence kind of platforms, certainly Everbridge, we have a leading one that, that, that we offer out to customers. But I think the idea of how do you stay on top of monitoring those and not only just seeing events coming, but how, how do you quickly correlate those to your business and what the impact is, right? So you can make a quick assessment. Um, so we've seen a significant uptick in um, companies who are evaluating those over the traditional, maybe we'll watch the news kind of um, uh, insights that are happening in the market. Um, the other one that I think is really interesting is, you know, we live in an IoT world now, and I think a lot of companies are thinking about how do we, really tie into both the physical and digital systems that are around us to help us respond, right? Um, so how do we extend that out? You know, I gave the quick example of, uh, of, of locking the doors in a, in a facility, but for example, you know, in, a, in, in an enclosed building, it might be um, if a fire breaks out, how do you quickly reverse the HVAC system, shut the fire doors and, um, you know, really change the posture of the building um, automatically without people having to go around and do that kind of stuff, right? So that's another trend I think people are really trying to explore. So that IoT layer and how do we bring that into our critical event response. Um, and then the last one I'll just mention really quick is that um, many organizations we run into have, you know, binders of plans. And so I think the other thing is uh, as more events happen more frequently, many organizations are realizing that you know, digitizing those plans in a way that enables the team to better collaborate during an event uh, across across departments um, is another key initiative I think many companies are taking, right? How do we get those plans out of paper and into something digital that everybody can leverage and access? And there's a lot of benefits in transparency and, and real-time collaboration that occur from that. Perfect. Thanks, Eric. Um, sure. So our last question today is, aside from weather, what are the typical events you see organizations planning for? Yeah, so I, I think number one is, you know, only COVID, right? Coming out of COVID, I think many organizations have looked at that. I mean, hopefully that was a <clears throat> non-repeating type of event as we as we exit COVID, um, but um, that's certainly one that that's out there. Um, I think security events, active shooter, many organizations have an active assailant, active shooter, workplace violence kind of um, uh, plan. Cybersecurity is probably the other really big prevalent one. You know, unfortunately, uh, coming out of last year, cybersecurity attacks, ransomware attacks were up significantly in many companies. You know, we ju just heard about the, um, uh, was just uh, recent when we had the pipeline attack on the East Coast, <clears throat> that was a ransomware attack. And so, um, I think that's a common one with more and more stuff becoming digital. Many organizations are really considering that. And then I think, you know, the last thing is just, again, thinking about how all those things overlay together. It, you know, it can be a little complicated. Uh, I think many organizations will kind of pick their top five that they want to focus on um, and then build out, may, may build down into the, to the plan structure. Uh, but again, consider 
cross cross pollination, I guess you would say, or cross impact and multiple events happening at once. Perfect. Thank you so much for those insights, Eric. Uh, sadly, we are approaching the end of the session. But as a reminder, uh, if you, we were unable to get to your question today, we will make sure that someone uh, will follow up with you directly. Um, also, this session is being recorded, so be on the lookout for the on-demand video. If you'd like to learn more about CEM, how CEM can help with severe weather events and beyond, be sure to visit www.everbridge.com. Um, with that, I want to give a big thanks to our speaker, Eric, and thank you, our audience, for taking time out of your busy day to join us. Uh, we look forward to seeing you at a future webinar.